During the course of normal service, an ocean liner would occasionally drop or shed a propeller blade, or, in the case of an accident, a propeller might be damaged. In either case, the ship would unfortunately need to be fitted with a new propeller, or replacement propeller blade. This required the ship to be dry docked. Scaffolding was erected around the propeller shafts to allow the men to work. This would be an entirely manual job. If present, the protective nuts were removed from the shafts. With the massive propellers, weighing dozens of tons each, resting alongside the ship at the base of the dry dock, the next step was to raise them up, one by one, and wriggle them into place. Most ships were equipped with lugs at the stern, to which block and tackle could be anchored to assist in raising the propellers up to the shaft. These lugs are clearly visible in this photograph of RMS Olympic. If the propeller was a single, fully cast iron or bronze propeller, then chains would be slung around two of the blades near the hub for lifting. The chains, of course, were attached to the block and tackle, which were anchored to the lugs on the frame of the ship. Slowly, the propeller would be lifted and carefully guided into place at the direction of the foreman. With coordinated efforts from the men controlling the block and tackle, and the men at the base of the dry dock and in the scaffolding, the propeller would eventually be in the correct position. This was made a little easier by the tapered shape of the propeller shaft and the propeller bore. The propeller bore itself had a small keyway so that it could be locked into relative position on the propeller shaft, which had a corresponding keyway. Once the propeller was in position, a collar nut was threaded behind the propeller. And once the nut could not be tightened manually anymore, a tommy bar or other lever type tool was inserted into one of the holes on the side of the nut. And a man on the ground tightened the nut further using the leverage, in a similar fashion to working a capstan on a sailing ship. If the propeller was not a single piece, but rather a boss to which blades were fastened, then the propeller boss would have been attached to the propeller shaft in a similar fashion as with the single piece propeller. Once that was done, the individual propeller blades were fastened to the boss. This process was less cumbersome, and this type of propeller had numerous other utilitarian benefits for shipping companies in their day-to-day -day operations, including the lower cost of replacing a single blade rather than replacing an entire propeller. Once the propeller was securely in place and the collar nut fully tightened, a large cone-shaped fairing was placed over the nut both to protect it from damage and thus reducing the risk of a ship dropping a propeller blade at sea, and to reduce eddies as the ship traveled through the water and thus reduce drag. If no other dry dock work was to be done, the scaffolding and block and tackle apparatus was removed, the dry dock flooded, and the ship put back into service.